Many thanks for the introduction. You can hear me properly? Thanks a lot for staying here until the end. I think uh, I'm sure you're all very tired and talking so much about food, you're thinking, oh, what am I having for dinner? <laughs> but no, you still have one more presentation, but it's the last one. And I promise you something. I'm not going to take 30 minutes. I'm only going to take 20. <laughs> and I will not even take questions. After that, we all go. <laughs> anyway, I thought I would wake up. You, you need to freshen up a bit, put your arms out. Let's go for it. Last presentation. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Great, I feel better now because I was getting a bit tired also. <laughs> okay, so I sent my CV and I said, what do you want me to talk about? And uh, because uh, I do research on many topics. And then uh, the organizers came back and said, oh, you've got this new center. Why don't you talk about that? And I was like, okay, so I'm going to talk about the new center that has only just started and we haven't done anything yet. Uh, so I thought, okay, so how do I, how do I present? So the idea is that uh, we do have some research that is going to be incorporated into the center, but I thought, especially for the young researchers, this is how the future is going to look for you when you finish your PhDs. So now you think that your PhD is the worst thing you've, you're doing, the hardest work ever? No, next is, next is getting money and getting funding. This is the worst. <laughs> so the worst is yet to come for all of you. On that note, uh, this is a success story, so I'm hoping to inspire you. So it's difficult, but it can be done. So I just share with you, I've been in Singapore for two years and a half, and I first arrived, and of course, academia, funding, publications, teaching, but funding, funding, funding is the most <laughs> important thing. So I was like, okay, 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 if I want to be successful, I need to start writing proposals, and so I started writing proposals, 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 and I got around 10 projects, but they were all very small. And this I don't recommend, because you get all these small projects, and it's a lot of work, but the funding is very little. So basically, I was working nonstop, uh, and then I thought, I need to write a big proposal, I need to get big funding so I can relax a bit. And then finally, we got this center uh, granted. And this is a center to do research on population health, and it has been identified in Singapore as a key priority. Because uh, I will share with you a bit more, but in Singapore, it's quite fragmented, the care, and we don't have this concept yet of population health. But Singaporeans, in that sense, they're very clever because when they identify a need, then they decide to go for it, and they said, we're going to put some funding for it. So there was an open call for the, by the National Medical Research Council, and they funded two uh, cent, cent, uh, population health center grants. And we had to provide a proposal, there was a, uh, an international committee, we had to go through different rounds, and it, it was quite uh, stressful, but then finally it got funded. It got reduced 30% of our budget, but, uh, which was a bit, uh, what do we do now? But uh, it's also true that we, we did get quite a lot of funding. So, it's around, uh, so it got from 10 million to 7 million, but 7 million is around $5 million, so, so it's not bad for four years. And it's a big group, so I will present now a, a bit of the work that we are planning to do. But having said that, it's, it also comes a big responsibility there. So it's now it's like, oh, we have to really produce something big here. So hopefully I managed to convince you that we're going to produce something big. So I just introduce quickly the vision, the mission, some of the research agenda, and then I want to spend a bit of time with the knowledge translation. I think one of the key findings from this conference was this idea of, okay, we are all researchers, but what do we do after with our research? And I think the two last presentations that were really good in terms of showing really practical research and how it can be also uh, used at the policy level. And I want to spend a bit of time on how we're engaging the community and the key stakeholders. Because I think it's important to think about that before you start doing your research, rather than starting your research and it's like, oh, do we need to include the community? Or do we need to include government? So, so we thought a bit beforehand how to go about it. So this, I always find these uh, slides very boring. But in terms of vision, mission, uh, when you get all this <laughs> data presented, but I have to say that this one, I find it very nice because I, we came up as a group with the vision and mission for our center. And we spent two days workshop only to come up with these two sentences. So that's why I'm quite passionate about them. And, and for me, these ones, they have meaning because, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure all the visions and missions have meaning, but when I see these uh, visions of universities and all of that, they're all like beautiful words, but I never understand exactly what, what they want to do. So it, here, the aim is quite high. So we want to be a leading center for population health. And we, want, we wanted to make sure that the, we were looking into a future in which every Singaporean enjoys good health and access to affordable quality health care. 
And you might think, okay, so this is the typical sentence, but no, if you pay close attention, for us, access and affordable. Quality, very important, but also providing access. So I'm already giving you a clue there what are some of the challenges in Singapore in terms of accessing healthcare and also affordable. In terms of the mission, we're very clear that we want to do multidisciplinary research, so exactly the topic of, uh, of uh, the conference. And we want to build capacities because Singapore in some areas is lacking some of the, the, the capacity, particularly on health systems research, the, the area of work that I do. So I'm very strong on building the new generation of, of leaders. And also we want to transform evidence into action. So that I was very clear. That last sentence, it was mine. Translate evidence into action. So I really wanted to emphasize that. So now a bit uh, about Singapore. So what are the key challenges? So what we wanted to do was to identify the key emerging population health threats. We wanted to achieve better care for individuals and for the population overall. And the final one, and it's there where I think Singapore is super interested, but it's where we need to do much more work, is empower and activate communities. And this has yet to happen. So we still need to find ways of how to engage more the community. And as you know, some of the challenges are really similar to those in Japan. So the growing prevalence of chronic diseases. We have a huge problem with diabetes. And actually, it's so big, the problem, that the government has declared the war on diabetes. Have you ever heard that? A government declaring the war on a disease? Mm -hmm. so, and it's not the Ministry of Health, it's the government. So that highlights how important it is as a priority. And then, of course, we have the dual burden of disease because we also have communicable diseases, dengue, and then, uh, of course, influenza. And the key one that I wanted to highlight is care fragmentation. So I do health systems research, and I'm sure you're all aware that Singapore tends to rank first in most of the rankings in terms of the health system, and also it ranks first on the sustainable development goals. So the last report from The Lancet, Singapore is number one health, number one sustainable development goals. But still, and everybody in Singapore will recognize it, there are big challenges. And one of them is that it's very much hospital-based, the care provided, primary health care is not very well developed and the connections are not there. So a lot of the primary health care is provided by private solo physicians still. However, the Singaporean government is very fast when they identify a shortcoming. They, I mean, I've never seen, I mean, this I've done research in many countries and the way that when they want to go for something, the, the resources and the impetus and the change is incredible. I mean, if that was my country and I can say because it's my country, Spain, a reform that in Singapore would take two years, in Spain would take 10 at least. So to, just to give you an example of a, in Spain you talk about change, change? We don't want to change anything. <laughs> in Singapore, it's like they thrive on change. It's like, let's, let's innovate, let's, let's, and that for me is one of the most fascinating things that I've identified from, from being there. So the other thing we wanted to do is, okay, we want to introduce a uh, center on population health. The first thing is, one thing we haven't done very well, and it's my first, task because we only got the funded in September, so we've only been operating for two months. What do we understand by population health? So this is, I'm going to do a proper review of that and actually the government, our first meeting we had with the Ministry of Health, they said, can you please help us to frame it for us? So this is the also very exciting thing about working in Singapore is that we work very closely with the Ministry of Health. So of course we wanted to look at their priorities and align them with our centre. And for them is, you see very clearly there, beyond hospital to community. So they've realized this is a priority. We need to move from hospital care to community uh, services. Beyond quality to value. So they want to improve also the pathways for the patient and then beyond healthcare to health. So they want to really promote prevention and they emphasize a lot on screening. So these are the key priorities for the ministry. And we are trying to align with them. So you see, we have the challenges, we are aligning, we have our priorities, and then we have our themes. So when we chose the center, we tried to think of what were the key priorities, and you see, it does cover a bit everything, but we're focusing on uh, nutrition, physical activity, chronic disease management, primary health care was a key area for us, and reducing infectious diseases. So we are going to uh, design projects around those areas. And for that, we have three cores that I will describe a bit there. So this again, to those, if, you, if it's not your area of, of interest or research, think that I'm also telling you about the process, how to come up with a proposal, how to come up with an idea, how to frame it. So these are the three cores. So one is uh, it's called PH, PHAC, so Population Health Analytics Core. Here's where we're going to collect 
big data. So we have uh, Alex Cook, who is going to be our vice dean of research. He's a statistician, and he wants to collect big data to do some, some of the analysis. And he's going to design a health opinion panel. I'm responsible, together with Gerald and Jason, of the health system score. And then we have another one on implementation. So if you see, we go, we're going to use big data, health systems research, and the implementation side of things. So we want to implement the projects that we do research on. And we are very lucky, because I, I forgot to mention that it's funded not to the School of Public Health, but to the regional health system. So the money goes to one of the key regional health systems, which is responsible for 1.5 million of the population. So we're working very closely with those that are responsible for, for designing and managing the services. So imagine the opportunities there. We work with the people that design the services. If we want to do an intervention, we have 1.5 million people. But not only that, we have to do it within Singapore. So this is the, the kind of collaborations that we can develop, and we are super excited. So the other thing that I want to do, OK, I have my projects, but I want to come up with projects that have the three components. This we haven't managed yet, because uh, it's a bit complicated to, to merge all. But at least I would like to have a big project that combines the three disciplines where we have expertise. Our core, I wanted to do a bit of international work. Because I, I was based at the London School of Hygiene. I love doing work in Singapore. But sometimes I also feel like, oh, I want to do research in other countries. Because I do health systems research and global health. So I was thinking, how do I find a way of doing international work? That the, the Singaporeans are happy, and I'm happy. So that was, the, that was a bit the idea of, of, of the center. So one thing I identified when I was doing my, I did one of my first research was understanding the challenges of the health system. I would talk to all the key managers at all the levels, very impressive, all of them very knowledgeable, and they would always say, oh, I went to a visit in the US, and I, I saw this hospital, and now we are implementing it as a pilot. Oh, I went to Sweden, and, uh, and then I really learned from the experience in Sweden, and now we have another pilot. So it was always like, so the way of working is very much about learning from other countries. So I thought, why not we propose a core where we're going to develop evidence, we're going to do international comparisons, and we can actually provide different examples, but also where it works, and try to do also systematic reviews to, to show the, the, the evidence of whether the system works or not. So we shared this with the Ministry of Health and with other partners before putting the proposal together, and they were very excited about the idea. So they said, please, if you can help us with systematic reviews, if you can help us with international comparisons, that would be great. So that's my responsibility. So I have international hub for health systems and policy comparisons, and I need the buying of stakeholders to come up with the topics. So it's a two-way uh, direction. So we can come up with topics, but the agencies and the community, those that we have involved, they can also come up to us and say, can you help us with this work? So it's very much about a collaboration. And then, as I said, capacity building. So we have a bit of seed funding for smaller projects, and we want to do capacity building from my core on systematic reviews, health policy, and health systems research. So these were the key themes that I already mentioned, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples of the work that we're thinking of doing, and then I move into the how are we going to uh, transform it into policy? So I want to give you a couple of examples because also to do international work, I thought I also need to make use of my connections and try to find opportunities where, because the, there were two centers funded and w ours was funded, the, the reviewer said, because we think is the one that has more international collaborations and more international potential. Because I forgot to mention that in my core, I've uh, identified a list of experts all over Europe and in the US that are going to help me with developing the case studies for the topics that we choose. One area that I didn't include in my proposal and that everybody has mentioned is you need to have other countries in the region. And that's why for me today is an amazing opportunity because for the case studies that we do, actually people mentioned, we want you to include Japan, the, way, the list of countries. Jap that, that was the reviewers. We want you to include Japan, Thailand, Malaysia, South Korea. The, the list went on, but I thought to, in this meeting, I was totally like, okay, I can work with the... <laughs> so bear with me if uh, in very short time, I contact you to collaborate on, on, on the project. But going back to the, the type of work that we can do also using the existing collaborations, so for this one, I thought, because I used to work for the European Observatory, and I used to do some of these books when I was a bit younger, and I, I'm not very sure I want to do another one, but I promise I would. I was like, uh, that was one of my first jobs, and I was working with Professor Martin McKee, and, and this was the first one we wrote together, the one in, it's quite old, but uh, 
I just got to the office and he said, and he's, I was a research assistant, and he was like, do you want to write a book, Elena? And I was like, write a book? I haven't even write a paper in my life. So now, now suddenly it's like he's giving me the opportunity of writing a book, because he had all the connections with the observatory. And he said, why don't you map what each country in, U in Europe is doing on assuring quality of healthcare, you write a profile for each country, and then we write it as a book. And naive of me, I was like, yes, of course, no problem. And then I was like, how do I do that? It's like, <laughs> I need like 27 countries. I need to design a questionnaire. I need people to, after doing that, I regretted it a bit. But uh, then all of these books, they don't count as an academic. It was, it's the book that is most quoted, the, the work that has been most quoted in, in my career. Because it's a very useful one. It's available on PDF. And countries that they want to develop a quality strategy, they go there. So I, I was silly enough to do it a second time. So I did it on clinical guidelines this time. And I keep on doing it because although academically it doesn't count because it's a book and in, in public health books don't count much, it's the work that actually people read. Because you know, like sometimes I, uh, when I was in academia for 10 years, I was wondering at some point whether anyone was reading my papers because uh, like maximum impact factor, maybe there was like 10 quotations or things like that. I was like, 10 people have quoted my work. <laughs> so then I thought maybe this is also a good approach. So we produced the, this one on clinical guidelines. And the idea now is that for the topics that we choose, I want to collaborate with the observatory to produce a book. So we will choose some countries. And one of the topics that we discussed, because I discussed it with Martin McKee, he's one of our advisors. And I wanted to do something on cardiovascular diseases and secondary prevention. And he was like, why don't you try to find out what happens in every country when somebody has a heart attack? And I was like, oh, I never saw it because we always see it like very, very scientifically in terms of pathways or healthcare barriers and facilitators. So suddenly this idea was very appealing. So we want to look at when a, when a person has a heart attack, what happens afterwards? And then in terms of secondary prevention, and we want to follow real patients. And we want to do a qualitative study on that. So it will be a bit different from these this studies because it will be based on, on qualitative research, but also we'll do some systematic reviews. So the other idea that I had, and this is more also, again, using opportunities as population health. In this case, we're focusing on human resources. So and sometimes it's a bit opportunistic. That's what I wanted to share with you. You have to look opportunities where they, they arise. If you want to do international work, and I used to work with uh, Nigel, Lord Nigel Chris. He's, um, he, w he used to run the NHS, and he asked the school to do um, the London School of Hygiene when I was working there to do a review of uh, the UK's footprint on health globally. And I thought it was so, such exci exciting work that I got involved. But thanks to that, I got to know him a bit. And then I said, OK, I'll do all this work. I'll work very hard. But you have to come to Singapore to a conference that I'm organizing. And then he came to visit. And then the next thing he told me is like, now, Elena, I'm working on this campaign on nursing now, which is a global campaign on nursing. And they really want to, uh, they, they really want to highlight the role of nurses and also the contribution they make to the economy. And they want the nurses to be much more recognized. So when he came to Singapore, I was like, oh, I would love to be involved. It's a global campaign. It's about human resources. It's linked to population health. Singapore is super interested also in the nursing profession. So we went to see the permanent secretary, the chief nurse, and they were all, we are in. If Elena does some research and some international comparisons, we will be part of the campaign. So that's another project that we are doing. So the campaign is going to be launched in February, and Singapore is going to be one of the, the key case studies, and we're going to do like a connection. I don't know how we're going to do it very well, but Singapore will be, will, will be featured there. So that's, in a way, the, we'll be trying to do some research, but also highlight the, the work that Singapore is doing. And then I'm just going to go briefly to some of the examples of the projects that we were doing. So we got funding because also we, are, we were already doing some of the work. So it was not like, uh, OK, you have the expertise, but some of the projects, the, the ministry knew about our work and said, OK, can you incorporate them and perhaps even make it bigger within the population health center? So I just want to give you a couple of examples. One, I'm very interested in looking at health system barriers and facilitators to the prevention of chronic diseases. And by that, I mean, you choose a condition, and you, we've developed a toolkit, and we did a lot of work with Dina Balabanova from the London School of Hygiene. And the idea is that through interviewing patients, professionals, and policymakers, through a condition, you can identify what are the challenges that that health system is facing. And we've done that for diabetes. We've done that for hypertension. And we've developed a toolkit that it can be applied in different settings. So I've done similar work in Singapore, Colombia. We're doing in Ghana, India. So it's same toolkit that can be applied uh, in different contexts. 
And the, the other work that I'm doing, and this is with Pablo Perel, and this is uh, uh, at the Center of uh, Chronic Conditions at the London School of Hygiene also, they're very much interested in new technologies. So the other way of working is that sometimes Singapore pairs with uh, the work that has been done in other countries, and then we put all the evidence. I promise I would finish earlier. Okay, I've got five minutes. Okay, <laughs> so we'll go faster. Uh, so so we, pa we pair together, and, uh, and we do some, some similar work. And this one is, again, uh, texting for secondary prevention. And here we've come up with some personas. Uh, it's quite interesting because the lady doing the work, the colleague doing the work, uh, she's a, she used to work for, for a marketing company. And it's a, an example of what you can learn uh, a bit outside what we are used to in terms of qualitative research. And they use the personas to then design texts for, for different audiences. And I thought this work is, is fascinating. So to finalize, these are some of the work that we've done already as a team. So I mentioned the health systems approaches. So we did a systematic review on, again, health system barriers and facilitators to the prevention of hypertension. Systematic review. You might think that it's very softy, that maybe it's not quantitative enough. But I'm very happy to say, Pablo told me last week, I didn't realize, that our work has been quoted in the new uh, guidelines for hypertension. Did you hear the new guidelines of hypertension in the US that they just came up? So our work is highlighted because we found in our systematic review that if you increase copayments, and the evidence was very clear, adherence to medication reduces. And they've taken that up on the guidelines for hypertension. These are the systematic reviews that we've been doing, some on community involvement, some others on diabetes. Then uh, that's how I met Professor uh, Kihara doing this work on the global health architecture. So identifying who are the key actors and we're trying to incorporate this into the center also. And I have a last topic that I, I cannot incorporate into the center because uh, it's a bit of, um, this is a controversial work that I do and it doesn't fit very well with population health, but somehow I'm going to put it there because <laughs> this is the work that I get trouble for. So it's migrant health, I'm very passionate about it, but it's, I mean, I'm trying to have a, a section of universal health coverage for vulnerable population. That's my link to population health, but that's why I have to come up with a framework to be able to justify this work because I think it's very important. So finally, how do we translate all of this into policy? So we're going to, we've designed a methodology for policy dialogues or how to engage policymakers. We've included community members in our steering committee, including patients, and we work very closely, as I mentioned, with the Ministry of Health and other agencies, and we actually interact and we have to agree on the agenda of our research. So because it's a center, we have a bit of freedom in that sense, but of course it's very important for us to do research that is useful. And finally, as I said, uh, we're really looking forward to collaborating with the, with people in the region on these topics and also for you to come up maybe with topics and come to us and say, Elena, have you thought of that? Can you please do, do a study together? We do a comparative analysis or we do some systematic reviews. I'm sorry I spoke very fast at the end, but I wanted to finish before hearing the second. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so on that note, uh, thanks a lot for your attention. And we're done five minutes early. <laughs>